Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are going to discuss an essential transformation in Informatica IDMC, that is sequence transformation. Sequence transformation is a passive transformation used to generate unique numeric sequence values. So these can be used for primary keys, surrogate keys, or any numeric field requiring unique values. For example, like when loading data into a database, you might need to assign a unique identifier to each record maybe for indexing or as a surrogate key, right? So in that cases, we can use sequence transformation to generate unique numeric values, right? We can also use the sequence transformation to cycle through a sequential range of numbers, right? So if you wanted to generate a range of numbers uh, in sequence, right? So we can use uh, sequence transformation. So let us understand with an example. So imagine you are working on an e-commerce project where order data is collected from multiple sources. Example, uh, uh, maybe two different regional systems like say for example there is region A so these are the orders from region A right so where we can see the order information from region A right so like this it is opening so this is region A orders so you can see the order information right order ID customer name product name order when it was ordered and what's the amount of the product, right? So this is orders. So these are the orders from region A, right? So in the same way, like uh, we might be having other source, right? So which is coming from other regions. So let me even open that source as well. So while each these sources provides an order ID, clearly we can see the order ID, but these IDs may overlap or duplicate between the sources like that was so this was first region a source right so there could be other region where you know you could have the orders from this region as well and these order ids may overlap or duplicate between the sources right so we need to generate a unique sequential invoice number right for all these orders in the unified data set before we actually load the data into the target system. So that's the requirement. So we wanted to generate a unique sequential invoice number for all these uh, orders, consolidated orders, right? So that's the requirement. So how can we achieve that is using sequence transformation. We are going to achieve that. That's the use case which we are going to work today, right? And why, why we need to uh, use this sequence transformation in this case is to ensure a global uniqueness for the invoice number as well as to standardize the format across all the records. So it has multiple sources, right? So we wanted uh, to uh, have a standardized format uh, for the unique uh, key, which we are going to call, to call it as invoice number, right? So that's the reason we wanted to use the sequence transformation. So let's get started. So log into Informatica IDMC and select the data integration service, create a new mapping. So you can name the mapping and now we wanted to, you know, get all the sources, order sources. So in our case, there are two sources, right? Two flat files. So first file is region A orders. It's a flat file. So I'm going to select local flat file and object is, let's select the object. So it is present on my secure agent machine. So this one. So you can preview the data as well, optionally. Just to make sure, you know, uh, you, your file is valid, right? So we can see the orders, all right. Now, how do we read the other source? We have multiple sources, right? So in our case, two, two orders we wanted to read. So you need to get another source transformation here, right? So let's call this as region B orders. It's a flat file and let's select the flat file here. It's a region B orders. Like this, uh, we can select multiple sources, right? And optionally, you can preview the data. You can see there are 10 records in it. So here you can see the 10 records, right? So yeah. Now let me close these files. Yeah, we configured the sources, right? Now we wanted these uh, sources to be combined. So how can we do that? 
we can use union transformation for that. So we wanted to com combine these records, right? Only then we can actually generate the sequence for all the combined records. So I'm going to, uh, you know, uh, combine them or merge them into one using the union transformation. So where is union transformation here? Yeah, here it is. We don't have, we only have two inputs, right? So what we can do is, yeah, just map this to input two. All right, now let's configure union. So these are the incoming fields from input one and input two. So instead of input one and input two, let's rename this. So I'll just call this as region A. And we can call input to as region region B. All right. So these are the incoming fields. So you can see here, right? So output fields will be the same. So I had the same names for so that's a requirement of union transformation, right? So if you wanted to learn more on union transformation, so you can go through my video. So that's been shared on the top right. So you can click on that link. All right. Now we had the union transformation where we combined the records from two sources, right? Now we wanted to generate the sequence for sequence for this combined record. So how do we do that? So let's add the sequence transformation here. Sequence transformation and then incoming fields. So all these are the incoming fields coming from the sources and sequence. So this is important, right? So what are the sequence properties? You can see here. So you can, uh, this is a shared sequence. So you can actually create a shared sequence as well. By clicking on new components, you can see a shared sequence. So we can create a reusable sequence using multiple sequence generator transformations. And then we can use that sequence here. But here, uh, as this is the first time, we will we'll create uh, the sequence like this. With, without uh, a shared sequence, right? So what are the shape sequence? What are the sequence properties? So initial value is what we require, right? So I wanted to start with something like 1001. So that will be my sequence initial value and how it has to be incremented. So in what uh, in what intervals, right? So or in what uh, uh, how you wanted to increment the value sequence value. So I wanted to increment it each time by one. So that's the value we need to give here by in the increment by field, right? And end value, you can actually leave this blank or you can give the maximum value. So this is two power 63 minus one. So that's the range of uh, begin. So that's the number here. So you can just by default, it will be displayed. You can just leave it. Or if you want uh, to generate uh, to a specific end value, then you can provide that value. Or you can just leave the blank, leave it blank as well. And cycle. So if you wanted to generate a cycle, meaning a range of sequential numbers, then you can check this checkbox. Then it will actually uh, try to generate the range of numbers. So what is the cycle start value? So it will actually say, for example, you wanted to generate from one to 100, right? So it will actually start with one and it will end with 100. And then if you click on this, right? So it will actually cycle through. It will actually uh, start again with the initial value, which you give one, uh, one, zero, zero, one, like this, right? So, or in our example, one, right? So if, or if you wanted to start with a, some specific value, then you can give it in the cycle start value. So that's the use of cycle. Cycle in the sense to generate the range of sequential numbers, right? That's the purpose uh, cycle is used. For now, we are not going to generate the range of numbers uh, and the number of cache value. So this will use it uh, when we have multiple partitions. For now, we we'll just leave it default and reset. Reset is the uh, option where we can actually enable this uh, if you wanted to generate uh, you know each time when you run the task if you wanted to have the same initial value right uh, starting with whatever initial value you have provided it here so then you can just leave this uh, disabled uh, if you enable this right so if you enable this then what happens uh, it will be it will be reset and it will always start so if you reset this it will always start with this initial value whenever you run the task or if you disable this, right, what happens is, so whatever will be the last sequence, last value in the sequence, right? So that will be uh, stored 
by uh, IDMs, Informatica IDMs, and then that will be used in the next run. So it will actually continue, continue the sequence in the next run when you run it, if you just disable this, right? So I'll just leave it as default, and then uh, we'll see. Uh, once the task is run, even we can see that value as well from where it started and where it ended, and what's the value the next run will be starting with, right? So I'll show you that as well. So for now, it's clear, right? So main things are initial value and increment by and where it has to end. So this, these are the important ones. All right, so that's it. So you just need to go to another one is generated fields. So these are the generate output fields, generated fields in the sequence, important ones. So the next 12 field, so next 12 field uses, so it is used to generate the actual sequence of numbers based on the initial value and increment by property. So we are gonna use this output field called next 12. Right, so this will be the actual field where we can where we'll uh, use it for the sequence. And this current value is the uh, value, like it is the value of it is next value plus the increment by value, whatever we give the increment by value. So, for example, if the initial value is one, right, and the increment by one, then if next value is one, current value will be two. If next value is two, current value will be three, like that. So typically we map the current value field when the next value field is already mapped to a down, uh, downstream transformation in the map. Uh, and if you still wanted to use that value, right? So it, it, it will, this will be already be mapped, right? So then we can use the current value. That's the purpose of it. All right, so now you can save it. And now I want, we have the sequence, right? We, have, we combine the records, we have the sequence. All right, now, what I wanted to do, I wanted to have a standard uh, format for my invoice number. So for that, I wanted to use the expression transformation. So because I wanted to prefix something before my sequence. So for that, we'll use expression transformation. So you can see here, current value, next value are the are coming from the sequence transformation. And tar. Oh, we selected target. No, I wanted to actually select the expression transformation where we wanted to prefix something to the sequence number. So I'll just call this as my invoice number. And we'll have it as this string invoice inv and then I'm going to append the next 12. The next 12 is the actual uh, variable or field which has the sequence, right? So you can validate the expression. Yeah, the expression is valid. So we just wanted to prefix something as a standard format for all the invoice numbers, right? All right. So now we can save it. Go to the target. So in the target, we'll see all the incoming fields, right? So we can go to the target and the target also, I wanted to generate a local, uh, you know, I wanted to generate it as a flat file. So here, the file I have already created with the fields. So including the invoice number. So this will this should hold the consolidated orders along with the invoice number which we are going to add as a sequence, right? So this is the file. So it doesn't have any data. So that's what we wanted to generate now along with the invoice number, right? So this is the extra column which should have the sequence, right? So let's close it for now. And then, yeah, we'll select this file where we wanted to write the data, right? So consolidated orders, all right. Go to target fields. These are the target fields and field mapping. So you can just select automatic. Yeah, automatically it will be mapped. And you can see next value and current value as well. So uh, optionally you can use this or you, we don't need to use this. Like uh, in our case, we already use this next value in the invoice number, right? All right. So you can just check if your mapping is valid or not. Field mapping is empty for input group. Okay, field mapping is empty for input group region A. Okay, we'll check that.
in the union. This is region A and region B, all right. These are the output fields. Okay, we need to map the fields here. So region A, so automatic, so, so that these are mapped to the incoming and output fields, right? So we need to map it. So that's what we need to do here. We missed that step in the union transformation. I'll just say automatic. All right, so now you can validate uh, the mapping. So it becomes valid now and save it. And now I'm gonna run it. So before running it, I just wanted to reiterate it and let's see, see here what we have done. So first let's click on the arrange all and see what did we do here? We had multiple sources which are orders and we wanted to have, we wanted to generate a sequence for all these uh, orders, consolidated orders. So to have the consolidated orders, we use union transformation to get the combined orders. And for all these, we wanted to generate a sequence. We did that using sequence transformation. And to have a standard format for all the invoice numbers, we use the expression transformation and return the data into the target, right? All right. Now let's, the, let's run the mapping. So run it. Mapping task, runtime environment, select the runtime environment. Make sure all the services uh, in your uh, secure agent are running, up and running. And that's it. Just click on run. You can track the status in the My Jobs. The job is queued. It is running now. It just takes a few seconds to complete. Yeah, success, right? So click on the job and you can see region A orders eight success rows, region B orders 10 and total is target is 18, right? So let's check the target here. And also the interesting part here is, so you need to notice here, sequence generators next value is 1019, right? So we started with 1001. If you observe, if you remember, right? So, and we actually had 18, right? So 18 records. So the next value will be 1019. So when we rerun this task, right? So it will actually generate the sequence from 1019 because we didn't uh, check the checkbox reset, right? So here, if you go back, so this is what I was referring to. Reset, right? So if you click on this, then it will again go back to the initial value 1001. We didn't do that. So whenever you run the same task again, the sequence actually starts with this value 1019. All right. Now let's check the target data. So you can clearly see that. So the invoice number has been generated and you can see the consolidated data as well. So it has like the uh, region A had uh, eight records and uh, you know, region B had, uh, uh, okay, it actually had region B and region A. Yeah, anyway, we had the consolidated data, right? And we have the invoice numbers here for each order, which is unique, right? Now we can actually identify each uh, order uh, with this unique invoice number. So this is how, uh, you know, you can actually generate the unique values using sequence transformation in IDMC. So it is, uh, it looks simple, but very much useful, right? So useful in other, so this is useful in other scenarios like, you know, generating unique ticket numbers, employer IDs or ship, shipment IDs and so on, right? So that's all for today's video on sequence transformation. I hope this example helped you understand its practical applications. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up, share it with your peers and subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. Let me know in the comments what other topics you would like me to cover. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.